there viewers and welcome back to the self-made auto channel sitting inside the 2004 hemi dodge ram it's got the big 5.7 in it it was towed in uh what i was told is a no start i go out to get in it see what's going on and it fires up but it runs like garbage and you have to keep your foot down on the throttle so i got it inside it's running super rich you can smell it. it's burning my eyes uh noticed a couple things grabbed a scan tool i think we're going to find a few problems with this both mechanical and you know some electrical stuff i'm just guessing i haven't gone under the hood but i did look at some preliminary things i want to share with you guys i'm going to show you what it sounds like first now you have to keep your foot on the throttle and sometimes you got to put it in clear flood to even start it. it's running super rich um i'll see i had the map i was up here i was looking at the map sensor voltage wanted to make sure that was correct because it seems to be running so stinking rich uh so i can share that with you guys hopefully that stays up while i crank it So our map sensor voltage at an idle should be down you know around one volt or it's just a smidge under however i can't let it idle because as soon as i start letting my foot off the throttle here we start losing manifold vacuum and the truck wants to stall all right but i do believe our map sensor is working because it does go down into a vacuum but wants to stall out on us so my gut was telling me right off the get-go is your egr valve is stuck open because that's what this thing's running like so i come down here i found the egr valve and i see it sitting at 4.1 volts and if i remember correctly these chryslers go from low voltage at closed egr to high voltage so i'm like ah bada bing bada boom we got it but let me show you why i don't believe it is stuck open i do not believe it is stuck open because I can come under the hood and I can stick my fingers right on the actual EGR pipe. Now, if this EGR was stuck open, that'd be scorching my little digits, but it's not. I see it as a new valve, so it's likely, you know, aftermarket, it's probably junk, and that's why it's at four volts, unless I'm remembering it correctly. Maybe they go from high voltage to low voltage, I don't know. But this is what she looks like under the hood. It's got a little kind of Natalie over there barking, a lot of MSD stuff. And I'm gonna show you one other thing I noticed. I noticed the way it cranks over it sounds like it has a dead cylinder so if it's you know related to the poor running i don't know but let's have a listen you'll hear the cylinder missing all right either that or that cylinder is firing kind of kicking it over i don't know we knew we're gonna have to disable the fuel and uh, do this again Wanted to clear it out all right so what i would do if it was me i would do a relative compression test find out what cylinders not contributing so to speak and see if that has anything to do with our rich running all right folks so i've got the pico hooked up what we're going to do is a relative compression test now we're certain that we have a cylinder that's low we can tell just by cranking it you know and listening to it with just our ears so I have the current clamp on the battery cable. You see, guys have seen us do this in the past, and we're gonna uh, see how much uh, current draw the starter pulls. And you know, as the cylinder comes up on compression, the starter should draw more current, and that's what we're gonna look at. Now, in order to know which cylinder it is, we need a trigger. So typically, you just back probe a coil, but this thing uses waste spark. It has one coil that'll fire this cylinder and a companion cylinder. So if we tap into the uh, the trigger line on that i guess or the you know the command line from the ecm it's going to fire twice we're going to see in a series of eight cranking events we're going to see this baby spark four times because it's going to be you know compression here compression there exhaust here exhaust there if that makes sense so what i did is i just put our pressure transducer in the number one cylinder here just so we have a very definitive yes that's this cylinder on this compression stroke so uh, i got the pico up here on the screen for you and we're gonna take and crank it over here and collect our data. Go ahead and crank it, Marie. That's good. All right. So let's have a look here at what we have. We will zoom in on a couple of vents, okay? So the green trace, that is our number one cylinder driver side front cylinder. And we're gonna use that for our trigger. So I'm gonna take I'm going to pull this up here. Let's change this here a little bit so we get a little bit more definition. Okay. 
So this is kind of, I don't say unusual, but we have some, some weird stuff going on. Uh, now our red trace is the number one firing event for the number one cylinder is the, is the coil trigger from the ECM. Every time the ECM goes from you know, 12 volts, pulls it down. Uh, I've just got my leads inverted on my scope. So this is what it would look like before, you know, it'd fire here, fire here, fire here, all in one event. So I guess three uh, rather. Uh, anyhow, let's see. We definitely have one cylinder that's very, very low. So this cylinder here, so I don't, I think the firing is one, eight, four, I'm sorry, one, eight, four, three, six, five, and then that'd be seven, two, and then start back over. It's interesting that eight and two seem to be quite high. Are they companions? Uh, let's write this down on the board. So I just looked, it was a good guess on the firing order. It is right, same as the old Chevy's. Uh, eight and five would be companion cylinders. Uh, what I want to do, I'm going to go help a customer real quick. We'll come back, we'll look at the data that we collected and see where we're going to go from there. Ever try to do a video when you're trying to do 10 other things? <laughs> so we'll go back to our screenshot here. Um, so let's go after, let's uh, keep this in the back of our mind, uh, that number eight and number two appear to be pulling more current than the other cylinders. Uh, as poorly as it's running, you can have cylinders that are washed out that don't contribute as well and stuff. So I'm not, I'm not going to focus on them too heavy. However, they all draw on a lot of, a lot of current. Uh, we've done other videos on that where rocker arm shafts have fallen off. Now these are a push rod engine. Rocker arms are on a rail. Uh, so I'm going to have to give this some thought. We're going to focus on this one right here. So one, eight, four, three, six, five. We're going to go to cylinder number five. We're going to see what's happening to that. See if indeed it has no compression and take our diagnosis from there because clearly it is not contributing. So I've gone ahead and moved our WPS back to the number five cylinder. So it's cylinder one, three, five, and seven. It's down the driver's side. So the third one back, I've got the WPS in there. I have it turned on. Uh, I'll get the Pico up here on the screen for you. We're gonna crank it over, see what kind of compression we have in that cylinder. And then we'll make an assessment from there. So I've got it here on channel one. All right, go ahead and crank it, Marie. Yeah. All right, well that is, <laughs> that's a big fat zero. We have no compression on that cylinder whatsoever. Um, that's interesting. So there's absolutely no compression. Now we gotta find out why and where it's going. So now that we've collected the data on the number five cylinder, uh, what we need to do at this point, because we have no compression whatsoever, is to do a leak down test and see why. You know, intake valve, exhaust valve, piston you know where's it going uh, what's happening and I guess we're gonna take it from there uh, I don't imagine it's gonna be too good in either case so I put our leak down tester in that cylinder now we're gonna have to crank the engine over by hand uh, to you know get it on the correct stroke if you will I'm just gonna put a bunch of pressure in it right now so we have 100 psi in there and we have 90% blow by. And I think I hear it coming out of old Kendra and Natalie over here. So you can hear that hissing. Like I said, I'm going to go bar the engine over. If it just continues to leak out of the intake, then, you know, we know our problem is on the intake side. Whether it's, you know, dropped a valve or what it's done, I'm going to crank. We're going to keep track of our leak down. I imagine it's going to stay the same because we saw no activity on our Pico when we were cranking it. So I'm going to use my fan clutch tool to spin this thing over. Get you guys spun around here. Hopefully you guys can see that gauge. I put a white paint marker on the crank so we can see it go 720. See if you can hear it leaking by that air filter. So you still hear it hissing right there? Like you hear Oh yeah. Yeah, you hear air hissing there. Still hear it? Yep. Sounds like it's pinched out. It's not changed tone, but you still hear yeah. it coming out of there. Yeah, you're whistling now? Yeah. <laughs> now it's whistling. Leak down is still the same. 
You're singing right. different tunes, but it's still singing. Yeah, you can actually hear it rushing on the intake now. So that's one time around. Yeah, you can actually hear it whistling out of the intake over there. Yeah, I think it's getting worse. started and it is blowing out of the intake the entire time sometimes worse than others so at this point I gotta make the call there's really no sense of going any further uh, you know regardless if there's an issue with EGR or whatever you know we saw there initially cylinder number five is spanked we need to get permission from the customer to go further or if he's gonna junk the truck or whatever he's gonna do. Uh, at this point, we could, don't, I don't hear any mechanical noise when the engine runs, like any clatter and like a, um, you know, like let's say the valve was open or valve spring was broken, you know, left the valve open and the rock arm is under there clatter and I don't hear any of that unless, unless it already, you know, shot it down the cylinder, chewed it up and rock arm spit out and was laying under the valve cover, uh, in that case, then it wouldn't make any noise, typically. Uh, usually you have an oil pressure loss, you know, as a lifter sitting there open, something like that. Uh, but I think if it was me, I'd pull the valve cover with the intention of pulling the head and then take it from there. So we'll see what he says. But for right now, we're gonna have to leave it at that. That's the end of the video, folks. There's nothing more to do. And uh, I can't think of anything else to do. I know, can't think of anything else. So we're gonna leave it at that. Now, a couple of people might be thinking, well, what about those other two cylinders that seem to have, you know, higher than normal contribution? I guess unless we're willing to progress and, you know, chase this problem down, I'm not going to go too far there. If it seems that he's willing to, you know, yeah, we're going to pull ahead or, you know, whatever we decide to do there. Uh, at that point, I may go through and do an actual compression check on the whole, you know, on the whole engine just to see, just to get the overall health. It is up there in miles. I think it was uh, 140 something, if I remember correctly. Uh, and that's it. Go down there, subscribe, leave your question, comment, criticism, or concern. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching. Bonus footage. I feel I owe you guys some closure. I did get permission from the customer to pull the driver's side valve cover. And that is what I found. The intake valve spring was busted, but it was all wrapped up around and holding the spring retainer up against the rocker arm, which is, sits over there now. Uh, and that's why I wasn't having any mechanical noise. Typically when I've seen these break, they break at the bottom of the coil and you get a ton of valve train noise. Uh, impossible to record this where it's at, you know, given that it was, let's see, this valve right there, super enhanced. I did pop the new one on. Uh, I would have loved to have shown you, but you can see my limited area. We can see now we have only well, a couple percent of leak down, roughly. So that's super good. I'm going to take and throw this thing back together, and we're going to see if it runs. Uh, I could not get it running to pull it inside. We actually had to push it in because I parked it back outside. So I'm going to get the uh, everything cleaned up here, rocker shaft, valve cover, and all that stuff, and the head, and see if we have any more problems. We're all back together. Coils are on it. Everything is plugged in. Valve cover's on, new gasket, batteries hooked back up, weak as it may be. Whoa. Alarm gonna go off. Nope. Right, moment of truth. Wait. 
hose is glass, baby. I did pop that spring apart so we could have a little look-see at that. There is the top half of the coil. There is the bottom half. Like I say, all the ones I've done in the past were broke near the bottom. But neither here nor there, I guess. I'm gonna let her warm up here. I thought it's got clear codes out of it, but it must be the battery being unhooked for so long did the trick. Sounds fantastic. <laughs>